CTE has been associated with repetitive head impacts, that is repetitive uh, concussion and subconcussive injury in contact sport athletes, but also in military veterans. With repeated impacts to the head, the brain inside the skull ricochets back and forth. It goes forward, it accelerates and decelerates, but it also goes rotationally. And that causes the brain inside the skull to actually elongate and stretch. And that stretching puts a, a lot of physical force on the individual nerve cells, especially the neurons and the axons. And that can lead to the buildup of tau. Tau is a normal protein in the brain uh, and normally it's inside the nerve cell and it contributes to what we call the cytoskeleton or the skeleton of the cell. It helps hold up the cell shape under abnormal circumstances like after trauma when the when the nerve cells are damaged the tau actually comes off those uh, off the skeleton it comes off the microtubules and it starts clumping up and eventually it'll kill the cell if enough builds up over time an individual in his 40s this is a former NFL player who is a person of large statue. You can see that the ventricles, the areas of the brain that uh, contain spinal fluid, they're enlarged. This thinning gets to be damaged more than the ventral aspect. And that's something we've really only seen in CTE. We can see spaces near the hippocampus, which is a part of the brain that's important for learning and for memory. And we can see that there's been shrinkage there as well. To see this in such a young individual is quite startling. We see a lot of CTE lesions on the top and the lateral sides of the frontal lobes, which is about two-thirds of the forward part of the brain. That's what leads to the symptoms and signs of CTE. Loss of memory, some behavioral and personality change, and often mood changes like depression. The real key to preventing CTE is preventing exposure to head impacts. So anything an individual athlete can do to minimize the amount of head contact, the number of falls or blows. If we can detect it in these young individuals, uh, that will give us an idea what triggers it. And then if we can detect it in those early stages, we have a really good path for treating it.